but actually, if you go back to my father's conviction, um, you know, he was that he, he always said that he was never convicted of tax evasion because the jury came back and they said, well, um, can the government find, you know, you know, is he guilty even if the government doesn't prove that he committed tax evasion? And the judge basically told the jury, yes, that you can convict them even if the government didn't prove their case. So, I mean, the, 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 the government wanted my father convicted and the judge was basically there to make sure that a conviction occurred. It wasn't like it was a neutral uh, setting and my father got a fair trial. In fact, he didn't even have a lawyer. He represented himself and his, and his hearing aid wasn't even working. He couldn't even hear half the stuff, you know, because he was, you know, older guy, mm. uh, even when he had the trial. But the thing with my dad is, you know, my dad wasn't somebody that just didn't pay taxes because he was trying to cheat, right? That he was trying to get extra money. My father told the government, I'm not paying taxes. And here's why, right? It's a legal argument. It's a constitutional argument. And it wasn't over a lot of money, right? It was a small <clears throat> amount of money. And, you know, my father, if he would have filed tax returns, could have easily, you know, found enough deductions to pay very little. And in fact, if my father just stopped paying taxes, the government would have left him alone. Uh, it was only because he was very public about the fact that he was not paying taxes. And a lot of other people started following his advice. Uh. They said, hey, this guy Erwin Schiff's not paying taxes and he's not in jail, so I'm gonna stop paying taxes. So they really wanted to make an example of him. So they, 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 they put him in jail, but, he wasn't a criminal and that he didn't have any criminal intent. He didn't believe he owed any taxes. It's different if somebody thinks they owe taxes and then they try to hide their money or they file false returns. My father didn't do any of that, right? So he didn't have a criminal mentality. He it, was, it, was just, a, it was a principal thing. Right. And so he, did, you, and, did you ever have a conversation with him just candidly and be like, yo, dad, was it worth it? Because 13 years in, in prison, well, that, and that pending was more. the last time. He was in jail a couple of other times so, before so that. So is it worth it? You know, I, you know, my dad, you know, to his dying, uh, you know, breath, you know, he was still committed uh, to fighting this fight. I mean, he mm. was obsessed with it. And, you know, he died, you know, chained to a hospital bed. He had a handcuff around his, his ankle. Oh, my God. And, you know, my dad was diagnosed terminal uh, uh, lung cancer. And they said he had about four months to live. And I think he only ended up living for two but I tried to get him released on a compassionate release, just, you know, let him die, you know, mm. and they still wouldn't let him out. Mm. Um, and and the, and the horrible part about it is, so my dad, when my dad was in prison, when he was 80 years old, he was in prison in New York, about 50 minutes from my house. So I used to be able to visit him, you know, on the weekends. And when he turned 80, they said, okay, you know, you're too old now, you gotta go to a hospital prison. And so they sent him out to Indiana and far away, so I didn't get to see him as often because it was a plane, you know, fly out there. It was so it was, it was less convenient. We talked on the phone a lot, uh, but I wasn't able to, you know, physically visit as much or not nearly as much. Um, but but he was supposedly there with the hospital. Well, meanwhile, my father got a skin cancer on on his head, but the government did nothing about it. The doctors didn't treat it. Had they treated it, he may still be alive today. Maybe he would have actually. But that seen was like it. that. I mean, this is super simplifying it, but it seems like a little bit of a, oh, now you need our help. Well, when you, when you put someone in jail, you're supposed to give them medical course, care. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, they you can't leave, right? Yeah. But it sounds like he he was definitely targeted a little bit. Which, oh, yeah. What's to say the targeting didn't well, they, I don't know. I don't know if he got worse treatment than a normal inmate or if that's just how the government treats the inmates. But for people who want government health care, I mean, basically my dad died of skin cancer because they didn't do anything about it. And, you know- and, and when I even got the records, I mean, some doctors actually weren't even supposed to show me the records. I actually got some of these health records to show how, you know, how they basically killed him. Um, and because by the time they they caught it, it was all over his body, you know, and it was really bad in his lungs. Hmm. Um, but, you know, when he was lying in his bed, right, he was breathing through a tube and he couldn't eat, right, because he's eating through like intravenous yet they still had him handcuffed and they still had a guard in the room. I'm like, what are you doing? He can't at, even go to the at what, toilet. At what age? 87. It's like, can you just take that handcuff off of Ooh. him so he doesn't have mm. to lie what was there? That like? What was that? Mm. Oh shit. What was that like for you? That was, it was, it was sad. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, just seeing him there and, you know, um, cause I had a flyout. He died in a, in, it was a, in a jail in Texas in, uh, in Dallas. 
Jesus, um, but it was a hospital, but it was like a wing where, where, where they, where they take the inmates. But, um, but my father was certainly not a criminal, you know, although one, you know, one, um, piece of trivia that I always think is interesting is that there's, there have been two books in the history of America that the federal government banned, right? The first one was this book called Fanny Hill. And I think it was some in the 1800s and the government banned it because they claimed it was pornographic, right? You know, by today's standards, I mean, comic books probably have more porn than, <laughs> than this thing. But so the government banned it. The other book that was banned was The Federal Mafia, written by my dad. Oh, and shit. they actually banned my father from selling that book. They didn't ban other people from selling it, but he was the publisher. And they banned him from selling that book to anybody. Wow. Um, but yeah, I mean, but there's still copies you of the have book. That book? I mean, people, I mean, you could buy, I mean, I still have a few copies. I, you know, I got a website, Shift Books, you know, where I, I, I still have a few copies of I'd my dad's I'd love to get books. a copy. Yeah, yeah, I'd but but it, yeah, I mean, but it's there's not that many books that the government has banned. Obviously, you know, it's a First Amendment issue because it was a political book, right? It wasn't, you know. Like, yeah, but you could own Mein Kampf. Well, yeah, the government guys can care about that, but obviously, <laughs> you could read Karl Marx's book, Communist Manifesto. Book, my father told Grimes you Grimes was not, reading it. Yeah, the government. My dad told you how not to pay taxes. That was what they didn't. Oh, like so it's yeah. So it's but, like if it's like if Breaking Bad put out a, like a book on how to cook meth. Yeah, no, like they'd be like, like, yeah, maybe you could still read a book on how you could cook meth. Yeah, they didn't ban it. Yeah, you know, but yeah, because my mom told me at a very young age, you want to cook meth, kid, cook <laughs> meth. You want to fucking ride motorcycles too fast. You want to do whatever the fuck you want. Don't you ever. Ever fuck with the IRS? The, Don't the, you fuck? The problem ever. though with my with my dad's book is it was very persuasive because yeah. he, he had copies of the Internal Revenue Code, Constitution, Supreme Court cases. He had a lot of things backing him up, so the government couldn't really refute what he said. So it's That's a really the, good book. yeah. Let's just yeah, ban it because it. you know a lot of what my father said was true. But I've never advocated that people follow his advice because a I saw what happened to him. But I know that nobody is going to get a fair trial in a tax case. I mean, if you commit murder, right, you'll, you'll, you'll probably get a fair trial. I mean, most likely. Maybe some people don't. But, you know, but if you do something where the government, right, like you, you're in a tax case where it's the government against you, in a government court, you are not going to get a fair trial. Right. You, the, the jury is, you know, it's, you know, they're going to tell the jury, you, can, you, you let this person go and you're not going to get your Social Security checks anymore. Right. You know, they they, they, they want to make sure that leverage. Yeah. So it, you're, it, I tell people, look, even if my father was technically correct on his view of the law and his reading of these court cases, and I've talked to people personally, right, lawyers, judges, you know, who have told me, right, I think your father is right. I think his reading of the raw law is correct, but he's not going to get away with it. So I've heard this firsthand mm -hmm. from people who are, you know, again, professional lawyers, judges telling me that my dad was right but you know the government couldn't allow him to be right so you know, they so put basically him in jail. So, so i that, know that people i don't incur because i think the government is corrupt and i don't think we have a, <laughs> a, a you know a fair society i tell people look do what the government says the government tells you to pay taxes pay taxes even if legally you're not required it doesn't matter because they make the rules they have the guns they have the jails right and so you know you just gotta do what they tell you even if what they're telling you is unconstitutional or illegal.